you know, I finally get a chance to make a video after coming back from our trip. It's nice out, meaning it's raining and it's not hot. And I clean off my desk and I'm ready to do the video. And yeah, slight problem. Moose, you wanna move so I can do the video? Uh, almost. All right, now that we got Moose out of the way, uh, today we're gonna look at the Dana Wireless by AlphaSmart. Now, this is a Palm Pilot, which is kinda overgrown into a word processor. It's the wireless laptop alternative. Basically, they took a Palm Pilot, gave it a larger screen, gave it a keyboard, uh, kept the touch screen functionality, you can see there's still a stylus, and gave it Wi-Fi, and then claim it can replace a laptop somehow? I'm not convinced. Anyway, uh, these are available pretty cheaply on eBay if you happen to spot one. Um, on the back, we've got a list of all of its features. Let me see if I can get this in focus. There we go. Manual focus lens today. Uh, the uh, device comes with US USB and power and, you know, SD cards. That's about it. The real uh, functionality comes from the nice large screen and 10,000 Palm Pilot apps. Uh, sure. Um, it's a very narrow screen and they're showing it in a portrait orientation, which I think is funny considering the form factor of the device. Are you going to hold it like this? I don't know. It seems very strange. I don't know why they thought this would be a good idea. And uh, yeah, as far as I know, it was not very successful, although um, apparently some people bought them because they are somewhat readily available on eBay. Inside, we've got some documentation, I believe. Yeah, standard warranty stuff. Yeah, some cardboard. We've got a good old fashioned linear transformer. This is a UL listed 7.5 volt half an amp center positive. And the unit right under here. What's hiding? Okay, a little getting started guide. Looks pretty basic. A wireless, wow. Look how thick that manual is for a wireless setup guide. And uh, yeah, it's just how to set up your Wi-Fi. We've got some software. Ooh, with the Pro Pack. Uh-huh, Macintosh and Windows. That's an interesting, interesting CD case. Never seen a CD case like that before. Um, and just a basic uh, USB cable. The original units, just called Alpha Smarts, were strictly word processors. They couldn't do anything other than, you know, basic uh, typing. The uh, Dana, or Dana, it had the Wi Fi, it, it ran Palm Pilot applications, and uh, I was doing a little bit more reading. Turns out they were reasonably popular in schools and stuff because they're fairly rugged. I mean, yeah, it's a little creaky, but you know, it's small, it's light, and you know, you can type away on it. Now, looking at this thing, as a former Apple user, the first thing that comes to mind is, of course, the Apple Emate, which, quite frankly, uh, is bigger, but I like a whole lot more. I mean, it has a nicer screen because it's uh, more rectangular, so it's more useful for things other than just word processing. And even word processing with the narrow screen really sucks because you can't read anything you've typed. It's, you have to do a lot of scrolling. Uh, this thing came out like four or five years earlier, yet has more or less the same speed CPU and more or less the same hardware. It doesn't have Wi-Fi, but uh, on this particular one, uh, you can add Wi-Fi with a card. Uh, this is just a dumb, uh, dummy card, but you can uh, slide in some uh, upgrades into that. And yeah, I mean, it was pretty functional for something that's many years 
older. So, uh, and it's got a convenient handle. I actually like the Mates. I thought they were pretty clever for schools. Anyway, getting back to this thing. Uh, the keyboard is pretty good. Uh, it seems a little small and the keys are a little close and it's just a, you know, a cheap membrane keyboard. It's not, you know, clicky like my computer. So, uh, you know, it'd be good for a school. It's nice and quiet. It has an Apple esque layout and that's got an option key and a command key so it's clearly influenced by apple's design and even the font looks almost exactly like an apple keyboard so i, th I think they really did just copy an apple keyboard and we've got a little pouch here for a, a stylus and you can imagine sitting here all day writing away now i don't know how bad it was using this like does that screw up your your uh, typing and everything while you're writing i don't know um these look like they're just holders for a stylus i guess conveniently designed for left and right-handed people that's kind of nice and there's just some leds we'll get up close to this stuff in a sec but uh, on the bottom it's just got some tips and made in the usa here we are up close with the keys. You can clearly see the Apple influence on all of this stuff. On the back of it, it's kind of hard to light because it's made of uh, the translucent plastic that's designed for um, infrared uh, transmission. It's just like uh, the end of a remote control because I think right here they've got the infrared or IRDA transmitter. So. Uh, there's two screw ports here. I think there is supposed to be some kind of panel that covers this up or maybe it's optional for schools, that sort of thing. Uh, anyway, I don't have that. Uh, there's a USB port for a printer. <laughs> That'd be funny to hook it up to my modern laser printer. Uh, just standard barrel jack for your power, USB for syncing, and two MMC slash SD card slots. Now, this thing actually came with two and again, if you look carefully, you can see that there is a screw hole here and a little little opening. So I think there's some kind of piece of plastic or metal that can pop in and then be screwed on to prevent people from removing the SD cards. And inside we have two SD cards, 8 megabyte and 16 megabyte. Uh, yeah, that's useful. I did actually look through all of this. This thing looks like it's basically brand new. There are no text files or anything on it. So I don't think anyone really used this, although obviously there are memory cards in it. On the back of the unit, there's just the instructions that I mentioned before. There is a reset button hidden in here. And there's also this panel, which is held in with a screw, which exposes the batteries, which are not installed. It looks like it can take three triple or double A's or a NICAD battery pack because there's a little two wire connection here. As you can see, this unit does work. It will boot up and make you go through the little calibration thing. Welcome, blah, 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 blah. Remove the stylus, tap anywhere to continue. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You gotta calibrate the stylus because the offset through the glass and stuff, it, it can confuse the actual posi exact position of where you're hitting with the stylus. Uh, USA, blah, 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 it's all the time settings. Uh, I think this is pretty standard for uh, any Palm device. They've just added these two side things. Um, this would be below it normally um, on a Palm Pilot, I think. I, I don't have too much experience with Palm Pilots, but um, they're obviously just filling in this area with their logo, but the device does seem to work just fine. And uh, to-do list. Oh, don't forget to register. I wonder if their website even it still exists. I don't think it does. And go back to apps and any games or solitaire. Why is the print icon like some creepy face? Hang on. That's just creepy. What is that supposed to be? Some kind of weird gnome frog thing? That's bizarre. I don't... Oh God, he's here too. 
I think I still prefer Claris, the dog cow from Apple's print dialog boxes over whatever the hell this thing's supposed to be. Well, that creepy creature thing in the print box was enough for me to want to take this thing apart and not use it anymore. So, just a few screws. They're all self-tapping through the plastic to keep costs down. Okay, the back is just plain old ABS. It's eh, not too rigid. There's a small light pipe for the, uh, I think it's the charging and power status indicator. And we've got just a pretty basic layout. We just have the flat area for the keyboard. There's nothing under it, like a you know a modern laptop would have a motherboard underneath the, the keyboard. And we just have some guides for the small connector for the uh, battery, the rechargeable battery, flat flex, angled display, the, all the white is the background, the back panel of the display, and then just a relatively small motherboard with um, a mixture of, well, it's, it's mostly a uh, surface mount. There's a couple through hole components and well, these flat flexes will just Disconnect these real quick. And it's being held in with a screw. Looks like just one screw. Oh no. Three screws. Okay, I removed a bunch of screws. There's four that hold the display in. And wow, this is relatively heavy. And there's also one screw that holds a little washer to hold the uh, little infrared panel down. But the screw is really tough. I had to really crank on that screw to get it out. But uh, yeah, you can see that's just an infrared transparent panel. And there's not much else in here. It's really just the flat flex for the keyboard. I'm not going to try and take the keyboard out. I'll probably have to destroy it because it's probably double-sided taped through here. And if you pry it up, it'll rip the back panel off the keyboard. They're usually one-time use keyboards and stuff like this and we just have the display which is made by samsung made in korea and oh yeah that's why it's heavy it's got a metal surround on it and you can see the interface for the touch panel well the uh resistive uh stylus interface and yeah that's it and it's real glass on the top and like I said it's quite heavy so it's just it's just connecting with this flat flex cable and that's about it on the motherboard there is a <laughs> Samsung wireless module with a single blue wire coming off it which is obviously the antenna you can see it has a teeny tiny wireless antenna connector but they're not using it they didn't, they didn't feel the need to actually put an antenna into the case they just have this little wire running off of it and i don't it's like glued on i don't know how yeah it's just attached it's attached with double-sided tape and it's kind of finicky to get off but it's probably not something you're going to be replacing too often and there's this teeny tiny relatively high density connector 3.3 volt it says and oh they even have a little silk screen for the antenna hookup even though they don't use it and on the other side we have a fairly standard motherboard for a device like this Got some flash, a Philips chip, which is probably driving the display, or, oh no, it's probably, um, could be USB. And some working memory, the Dragon Ball VZ processor, which is, uh, 16, no, 33 megahertz. The flash storage isn't listed, so it's probably strictly for the Palm OS, and that's it. The, the storage is probably all done through the SD cards. The uh, flash, or sorry, the uh, memory is either 8 or 16 megabytes, depending on the model. And like I said, the CPU is 33 megahertz. And we've just got the standard connectors that we went through. And you can see the IRDA transmitter and receiver. And the SD card slots. A super cap. And some power supply stuff. 
not 1.0, it's revision 10. And it's actually a pretty decently laid out board. There looks like a JTAG connector here. They made a nice little heat sink here with a big uh, gap in the copper layer. And there's a lovely list of some cool dudes on the PCB. <laughs> Brad, Joe, and a whole bunch of others. I like I like when companies put little things like that on it. Apple used to do that a lot and they stopped a long time ago. All stuff probably for the power supply for the SD cards. Uh, that one, Malta ST, uh, four megahertz. That might be a uh, an interface for the SD cards. There's your reset switch, just a little tacked button. Clock crystal down there, probably for the time and date main cpu and there's nothing on the back aside from the connector to the uh wireless card there's just some odds and ends power supply stuff mostly this stuff all probably uses weird voltages or at least variations of uh standard ones but you know you're you only have one source the battery or the power adapter so you gotta convert them into 5 volt 3.3 and all the other stuff there we have it. It was basically an overgrown Palm Pilot, but it had a keyboard and it seemed actually kind of useful. I mean, you know, you got USB, you can print from it. Yes, technically you can do things like print straight from your Apple eMate. Apple was doing that quite a long time before this. And uh, it was actually really, really cool plugging in an Apple Newton into a printer and just printing from it. It seemed like that was the future. You could just go right up to a device and print from it from this little portable thing. You didn't need a computer. I always thought that was like totally cool at the time. And you could even send faxes and all sorts of stuff. And this thing obviously has more features, but it really didn't improve in uh, terms of the hardware. Uh, you know, the, the display was more or less the same. The CPU was more or less the same. S still had limited memory although much more than the Apple Newtons. The uh, form factor, not super rugged. The, the E-Mate is way more rugged than this thing. I mean, the E-Mates really feel like you could throw them somewhere and they won't break. This thing was rugged, but not crazy. Like, you could flex it and stuff. In terms of collecting, these things are kind of non-existent. Apple products usually carry a lot more... Uh, collector value than than these things so i don't i don't think you can you know sell these for any reasonable amount of money although mine is complete more or less so in box maybe uh maybe i can get five dollars for it mm, probably not in case you're wondering why i wasn't uploading videos the last little while i mean other than my usual long breaks between videos just because I get off work and I don't really feel like shooting videos and working again after going to work <laughs> sometimes. But uh, we were on vacation for a couple weeks. We went to London and we took a day trip out to Bath, which was very cool. I really liked Bath. London was okay. It was just, it was just metric New York. It wasn't, it wasn't that exciting. I mean, I liked it, but it wasn't, it wasn't vastly different from where I live now. And uh, then we went to Paris for a week. That was really cool because I love Paris and I like going there. That's the third time we've gone. It's really cool because we took the channel and underneath the British Channel. And uh, yeah, it was a really cool trip. Uh, unfortunately, I'm back at work and I've used up all my vacation now. So ugh. I'll try to get some more videos out. I do have a bunch that are shot. I just haven't edited them. <laughs> 